Hello to all. A warm welcome to my new session on Chapter 1 Cloud Computing Fundamentals. So, this session is continued from the last session. So, this session we have discussed about the concept of enabling technologies in cloud computing. Enabling technologies, it has a the five different types of the technologies like broadband networks and internet architecture, data center technology, virtualization technology, web technology, multi-tenant technology. These are all the sum of the different enabling technologies in the cloud computing. So first let me know about here. So what is that broadband networks and internet architecture? First thing know about what is broadband? Broadband refers to various high capacity transmission technologies that transmit a data, voice and videos across the long distances and at high speeds. So the common communication medium for a transmission which includes a coaxial cable, fiber optics cable and radio waves. These are all the communication medium for a transmission. Here, the broadband is always connected and remove the need for dial-up connections. So, it is very important is for reaching. So, it allows for high quality and quick access to the information like where in the teleconferencing, in the data transmission and more in various capacities including some of the healthcare, educational and technological development situations. So, there are the six main types of broadband technologies like what digital subscriber line cable modem fiber wireless satellites and broadband over the power up lines that is bpl so these are all the some of the broadband technologies in our communication transmission technology then this is at the definition of broadband then what is broadband connection broadband connection is a transmission of high quality data of a wide bandwidth in its simple form is that it is a high speed internet connection that is always on this is we can call it as a broadband connection a broadband connection is a transmission of high quality data of a wide bandwidth this is we can call it as a broadband connection Now, the first enabling technology is a broadband networks and internet architecture. In the broadband networks, the first thing is that all clouds must be connected to a internet or a network. The first thing is that all the clouds must be connected to a network. The second thing is that internet largest backbone networks, these are all established and deployed by ISP. The ISP which means that internet service provider. These internet service providers are interconnected by the core routers. So these interconnect internet service providers which are interconnected by core routers. So these two very important thing in the concept of an the enable technologies that is a first concept broadband networks and internet architecture here the so what does internet service provider mean so here what does internet service provider mean that means isp means what so isp it's a company that provides internet connections and services to the individuals and organization so isp it is a company that provides a internet connection and services to individuals and also the organizations. So some of the ISP providers which are so are all the use the ATL connection or a Vodafone connections or an idea connections or a BSNL. These are all the some of the examples for an ISP. So ISP may also provide software packages such as one email accounts or a personal websites or any home page these are all the examples
the next slide we move on internet connecting provider and consumer so internet connecting provider and also the consumer here the established and deployed by internet service provider and here is that this is an internet's largest backbone networks are strategically interconnected by the core routers and connected the world multinational networks so this is a diagram this is a diagram the first figure one it shows that some of the messages travel over the dynamic network routers in this internet service provider inter-networking configuration the figure one which shows that isp network connections to other isp networks and the various organization so the first the figure which shows that here the concept of internet was based on decentralized provisions and management model in this concept internet service provider can freely deploy, deploy and operate and manage their networks in the addition to and selecting the partners of an isp for an interconnection in this the concept is that internet topology so internet topology has become the dynamic and more complex aggregated of isp that are highly interconnected via the core protocols protocols means it is a rules or the sum of the standards in the smaller branches is extended from these major nodes of an interconnection and the branching outwards through the smaller networks until eventually reaching every internet enabling electronic devices so these are all the diagrammatic representation of the figure one so in this the main concept of the figure one which means that some of the messages is travel over the dynamic network routers in this the internet standard provider internet working configuration so dynamically which means that there is always changes in the network routers then the second diagram that is figure two it shows that an abstraction of an internet working structure of the internet an abstraction of the internet working structure of an internet which shows that the first thing is that this diagram which shows that in hierarchical topological composition of a, the tier one so here this is a tier one and here is the tier two and here is the tier three this one this is the core tier one is made up of the large scale international cloud providers that oversees the massive interconnected global network so this is a shows that so here is that this is a tier one it is a made of a large scale and international cloud providers that oversees a massive interconnected global networks so which are connected to together to an uh, the tier two these are all connected together to the tier two logical regional providers the interconnected isps of the tier one and also the tier two providers as well as the local internet service providers of the tier three the cloud consumers and the cloud providers these can connect it directly using a the tier one provider since any operational the internet service provider can enable the internet connection here so that this is a diagram which shows that how an abstraction of an internet working structure of internet so this is a diagram which shows that the tier one tier two and tier three are how they can the internet working together in the cloud computing manual then we move on to the next slide this is the second enabling technology in the cloud computing then what is a data center the data center it is a facility used to house computer system and associated components together such as telecommunication or the storage system these two are the examples for the data center technology so what is the data center technology the data center technology it is a facility 
use it to house computer system and associated components together. So there are the sum of the four different types of data center technologies. So which are the virtualization, the second one is standardization and modularity, third one is an automation, the fourth one we can call it as remote operation and management. Then go to the third enabling technology is virtualization technology. So basically the virtualization is the process that permits you to share a single physical resources or an application among multiple users in an organization. So here the virtualization which means that it's a process that permits you to initiate a single physical resources or an application among the multiple users in an organization. So it is done by assigning the logical name or building the logical level to the physical storage devices and offering a pointer to a particular physical devices when the requirement has been arises. The sum of the techniques to perform the virtualization in the cloud computing concept. So these are all the sum of the different types of the virtualization in the cloud computing concept. So they are hardware virtualization, operating system virtualization, server virtualization, storage virtualization. So already I told the definition of a virtualization. The virtualization it is a process that permits you to share a single physical resources or an application among the multiple users in an organization. This is the definition of a the virtualization. Here there are the four different types of virtualization. Hardware, operating system, server and also the storage virtualization. So this diagram which shows that the concept of a, the hardware virtualization. So what is a hardware virtualization? If the virtual machine is directly installed over the hardware machine. This we can call it as hardware virtualization. So what is a hardware virtualization? Here if the virtual machine is directly installed over the hardware machine. This is we can call it as a hardware virtualization. Here the role of this hypervisor is to control and the monitoring the process memory and also the various hardware resources. So here is that the role of this virtual machine is the hypervisor is to controlling and monitoring the processor and also memory and the various hardware resources. When the virtualization is done in the hardware system, the user can install the multiple operating system to run the various application. The main advantages of this virtualization means that here is that when the virtualization is done in a hardware system, the user can install a multiple operating system to run the various application so that the hardware virtualization is mainly performed for server platform because handling the virtual machine is more manageable than the controlling the physical server. So that is a hardware initialization. So this diagram which shows that the VM, VM means virtual machine. So guest operating system and also application server and the virtual machine management and hardware. Second thing is that operation system virtualization. So operation system virtualization. Here is that it defines when the user directly install the virtual machine software. Here the user directly install the virtual machine software on the host, the operating machine rather than the installing it directly on the hardware system. So operating system virtualization which means that when the user is directly install a virtual machine software on the host operated machine rather than installing it directly on the hardware system. This type of a virtualization we can call it as operation 
system virtualization we can also call it as operating system virtualization the third type is server virtualization so what is a server virtualization it defines one the user directly install a virtual machine software or a virtual machine manager directly on the server system this is a it defines that one a user directly install a virtual machine software directly on the server system this type of virtualization we can call it as server virtualization so the server virtualization is mainly done because of a physical server it can be sliced down into an a server other servers depending on the load balancing requirement the fourth one the virtualization is storage virtualization storage virtualization which means that he defines that it is a process of grouping the physical storage from various network storage devices and indicates as an a single storage device this type of a virtualization we can call it as storage virtualization it defines that it's a process of grouping physical storage from the various network storage devices and it indicates that as a the single storage devices this type of a virtualization we can call it as storage virtualization that the fifth virtualization is application virtualization so what is an application virtualization here the user can have the remote access to any application from the server here the user can have remote access to any application from the server here the server plays the role of in storing all the personal and sensitive information and the various characteristics of an application the sixth is a network virtualization so network virtualization it helps to run and process the different virtual networks and each network consisting of a the individual control and data plan this type of a virtualization we can call it as the network virtualization the network virtualization it offers the facilities to use for creating provisioning virtual networks they are logical switches routers firewalls load balancer and the virtual private network then we move on to the next one the desktop virtualization so what is an desktop virtualization here is that the user can remotely store their operating system on a server located inside the data center so it allows that the user to access their desktop virtually from any remote location by using the different set of an machines so that here the user who require any specific operating system rather than a windows server will need a virtual desktop so the example for desktop virtualization here is that telnet telnet and also the one more is that that is an uh, the some of the benefits of the desktop virtualizations are mentioned below they are user mobility portability is the management of software installation updates and also batches these are all the some of the benefits of a desktop virtualization the eighth one is data virtualization here is that the data is collected from the multiple sources and managed at a single location without any information about the technical information so this type of a virtualization we can call it as data virtualization so examples which are oracle and also ibm so some of the features of an virtualizations which are the first one is partitioning second one encapsulation of data third one is an isolation the fourth one is an hardware independence the first one is partitioning so first feature is partitioning in the virtualization makes it possible to run 
the multiple servers at the same time on physical server. So this is a feature we can call it as partition. So partition in the virtualization, it makes it is possible to run multiple servers at the same time on the physical server. This is a first feature. Second one, encapsulation of data. All the data is stored inside the virtual server, including the boot disk. It will be encapsulated in a file format. The encapsulation, which means that it is a hiding of a data. So that all data stored in inside the virtual server, including the boot disk, it will be hiding in a file format. Third one is isolation. The virtual server working on the physical server is safely separated and will not affect each other task. This is we can call it as isolation. Fourth one is hardware independence. When the virtual server runs, it can migrate on multiple hardware platform. So hardware independence, which means that it does not depend on any hardware components here. Yeah. When the virtual server runs, it can migrate on multiple hardware platform. It does not depending on the any one hardware component. It is an independence of the hardware components. Then the characteristics of virtualization. So first one is that authentic, authentic authenticity and security second one aggregation third one availability fourth one isolation fifth one resource distribution first one is authenticity and security so virtualization platform make sure connections are time with an automatic load balance so it runs on excessive number of servers which prevents the interruption in the services. So this characteristic we can call it as authenticity and also the security. Second one is aggregation. As we know, the virtualization enables many devices to split a resources from a single device. So it can be deployed to connect with other devices by using a single host. This is we can call it as aggregation. Third one is Availability. Virtualization software offers multiple features that cannot be obtained on the physical servers. These features are beneficial as increasing the uptime, availability, fault tolerance, and many more. These are all the features to help to minimize the downtime and it develops the productivity along with the security. This is we can call it as an availability. Then fourth one is isolation. The virtualization software contains a self-contained set of virtual machine. And these VMS provides a guest user in the virtual environment. So this we can call it as isolation. Fifth one is resource distribution. Virtualization permits the user to build a unique computer environment from the host machine host machine whether a single computer or a, a group of computers are connected servers it authorizes the user to restrict the clients as an active users the scaling down the power consumption and easy to control so this we can call it as resources distribution so resources in the sense of uh, the components in the computer system So these are all the benefits of virtualization like virtualization is more flexible and efficient for allocating resources and it has enhanced the product development and it cut down the cost of in IT infrastructure. The one more is the user can access the application remotely and the virtualization offers rapid scalability. Then it provides the high availability and distracts its recovery and it fulfills the IT infrastructure demand and also the virtualization it permits 
the running a money operating system this virtualization is helps in developing efficiency for developing and testing environment so these are all some of the benefits of a virtualization the fourth enabling technology is a web technology so web means that is internet here the cloud computing raised on internet so web technology is generally used as both the implementation medium as well as the management interfaces for cloud services some of the basic technologies the basic web technologies which are the first one is uniform resource locator so uniform resource locator which is commonly referred to as a, the web address it is a reference to a web resources that specifies its location on the computer network and the mechanism for retrieving it this is a definition of url so commonly referred to as the url is that it is a web address for example is http www.gmail.com or www.google.com these are the example for the url second one is hypertext transfer protocol commonly referred to as http so this is an the primary communication protocol is used to exchanging the content third one is markup language html and also xml so these two are express web centric data and metadata web application fourth one is applications running in web browser so here the web browsers for the presentation of an the user interfaces these are all the applications that is running on the web browser the last one is that enabling technology is a the multi tenant technology here the multi tenant technology enables multiple user to access the same application simultaneously so multi tenant user which means that enabling multiple users to access the same application simultaneously the multi tenant applications ensures that the tenants tenants means users don't have to access to the data and configuration information that is not their own so this is a diagram which shows that first diagram is a single tenant here only one user can use the same application so here is that the multiple user to access the same application here the single tenant here is that only a one user to access the same application so second diagram which shows that the multiple user to access the same application simultaneously so this is a diagram which shows that the multi tenant technology thank you